It's really a pleasure and honor to have uh, Dr. Shannon Sundar uh, all the way from Bar from the Har Har region in India, and he just flew in last night. And I got the emails at at nine o'clock, uh, you know, saying Kishore, I've arrived, uh, and uh, uh, I'm tired, <laughs> but he but he made it. Dr. Sundar is really a world leader in visual dysmoniasis. Uh, he and I think the great thing about what Shannon is doing is he's on the ground uh, dealing with patients. Uh, he's at interface of clinical science, um, and he really uh, I had. I had a lunch with him in Chicago a year ago, and um, I find him to be a really passionate man, and for him it's very simple. He needs to find a treatment to deal with VL, and he said that's what he wants to do. So it is a real pleasure and honor to have uh, Dr. Sundar, and so Shannon, please come on up. So you just have to push this button, button here. Thank you. It was really an uh, honor to be here, and I am really grateful to Kish and the organizers to invite me here. Believe me, it has been really long to come to Vancouver, and it's 2.30 a.m. for me. <laughs> so if I fall asleep, just wake me up. <laughs> so... Uh, I, I want to discuss with you regarding the treatment of uh, visceral ischemiasis in uh, Indian subcontinent. But I thought I'll give you a, some idea of the disease. Before that, why ischemiasis is important? Uh, ischemiasis occurs in 103 tropical and temperate countries. Most of them are either developed or least developed. Two million cases occur every year. About 500,000 of visceral leash, which I'm going to tell you now, and, and 1.5 million of cutaneous leash. The prevalence is about 12 million. It's a rough estimate. And more than 350 million people are, are at risk. Further, Lishminesis is an increased worldwide. The disease is moving from rural area to urban areas. There are areas where there were no disease, there are new outbreaks. Uh, and <clears throat> the disease is becoming difficult to treat. And you will know uh, how it is. Since uh, many of you may not have uh, the exact idea or, or uh, the knowledge of the, uh, of the disease, I thought I'll give you a brief overview of the, about the disease itself. Now, the parasite occurs in two forms. This is the promastigotes, which occurs in vectors, flagellate form. And this is, uh, in fact, this is a amastigot. This is one amastigot, where you can see the a nucleus and canetoplast. And this is inside a macrophage. This is the nucleus of the macrophage, and you can see beautifully the, the, the parasites are inside the macrophage. So it's intramacrophageal disease. And sandfly is the vector. Flavotomas in, uh, in the old world, and neutrogemia in the new world. It occurs in three major forms, visceral forms, cutaneous forms, and mucosal forms. I am going to talk about visceral leishmaniasis, basically. This is caused by L. Donovani complex, and it is anthroponotic in Asia and, and most of Africa. Uh, it is genotic uh, in Europe, uh, mainly around Mediterranean basin and a part of uh, Central Asia and, 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 and uh, Sudan, and of course in New World, Brazil is, has the maximum number of cases. So this is genotic uh, cycle, so from man to sand fly to dog and, and this goes on. And this is anthroponotic, man to man, sand fly man, man to man, and this is a 
newer form of transmission which is through drug users where they share the needles. So, the disease is transmitted through needles, so man, man to man transmission through infected needles. And this is the distribution of the uh, disease, you can see that actually these are the three main foci, India, Eastern Africa and, and, and Brazil in, in South America. Then coming to 90 percent of the VL, it is contributed by Indian subcontinent, Sudan and Brazil, of which of Indian subcontinent, India actually contributes 70 percent of world's VL burden, Indian subcontinent and India alone accounts for 50 percent of the uh, burden of which Bihar, uh, the state of Bihar, uh, I will show you in the map uh, now, uh, uh, contributes max most of the cases. And so this is the state of Bihar and we have a center here, treatment center where we have the capacity to treat about 84 patients and uh, we treat 1000 patients every year and of course I, I live here, here is my university in Eastern Uttar Pradesh and I commute. <clears throat> and this is a typical picture where you can see the straw houses, uh, very ideal ground for uh, breeding of sand fly. You can see a lot of animals, animal excreta to lay the eggs for sand fly. And this is the uh, young children, immune naive, very um, uh, apt ca candidates for to contact the disease. Basically, the clinical feature is that 90 percent of the infection is asymptomatic. So, it controls itself, but in those in which it becomes symptomatic, fever with rigor and chills and splenomegaly are the remarkable uh, features and it, it, it mimics very much like malaria. And then very quickly these patients develop anemia, um, leukopenia and thrombocytopenia. So, uh, and may develop bleeding manifestations, may develop uh, hepatitis like thing uh, pic picture. <coughs> they, so, as their immunity goes down with the disease, they develop secondary infections like tuberculosis, pneumonia, herpes, chicken pox, when, and skin infections, cabbage, boils, etc., GI infections, all forms of GI infections. And if these patients are not treated, uh, they are going to die. This is the typical patient, uh, a young girl, and you can see if you notice that the spleen has become so enlarged that it, it is trying to burst out of abdomen. So, uh, and this girl actually had failed treatment with antimony. Now coming to the treatment itself, uh, pentavalent antimonials have been the mainstay of treatment for almost 70 to 80 years when it was first discovered in 1928 uh, by Dr. Brahmachari. Uh, of course, it is found, it is, uh, um, uh, it is used in two forms, sodium stipogluconate or megalumin antimonate uh, in English and French speaking. Uh, countries. The antimony are effective worldwide except India where uh, I would say that only 30 to 40 percent patients respond to treatment with antimony. And there have been attempt to overcome this by periodically raising the dose. I will show you that slide and where you will see that it has not worked. Antimony is a toxic drug and this is not a well known fact to many people, but actually with, anti with the drug alone you can kill 3 to 6 percent uh, people, patients. And I think in today's era if antimony were to pass the regulatory uh, approval it would not. And I, I don't think even uh, uh, you say a drug like ampicillin or say tetracycline or all those antibiotics, 
even one in one thousand death is permissible. But here the 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 mortality is three to six percent. Uh, basically, it's due to cardiotoxicity, and in co-infected pancreatitis is a uh, big problem, huge problem. And this is just one example where you can see that there is a uh, prolongation of the QTC. It's th this was a 20-year-old young lady, and look what happened. And then this lady developed uh, torsa de pointis, and uh, we, uh, she was six times defibrillated, revived, and ultimately died. So this is what antimony can do. This slide shows that in, in, in early 80s or late 80s, uh, uh, the efficacy was more than 80 percent of antimony and then uh, over the period of almost 15 years, it has gone down to 30 to 40 percent. 